Hi guys, I am Nutrix the Synth Guy and today we're talking about on how to actually add a analog input on a digital in on the MX-1. Now I really like the MX-1. I'll do another video soon about what it is um, because some people don't really understand how performance based of a mixer it is. It is not a mixer to mix. It, it does that but it's a mixer to perform. There's everything on it, uh, time-based, linked to tempo. Uh, there's effects that are time-based. It's, it's really powerful, really cool. I've got other videos on it, but I'll do one just on you know a tour of how to actually use it correctly. But one thing that um, I really can't, or I am not using until now, is there is the digital input, which is, perfectly fine, but in my case, I don't have a device that has a digital output that can connect to that. So it's actually a useless input. And the last time I talked about it, somebody suggested to buy a converter. So I looked it up and I bought this. Now this is actually a small converter. Let's It's, it's a no-brand name. I just got the, the cheapest one I could find on, uh, on Amazon. And this little thing has two outputs, two outputs, and two inputs. When I say two, it's... Follow me on that. Two inputs. These are line in, left and right, of course. They need, they need powers. Comes with a USB connector, so you can actually plug it in like any uh, smartphone charger would work for that. So power to this. And this will actually take the input, that's non-balance RCA inputs, uh, and convert it into digital. And the output will be um, outputting in coaxial. So this is same, looks like the same cable, it's uh, RCA, or Toslink, which is the fiber optic version. So depending on what type of digital input you have here on your devices, uh, you can use this to do that. Uh, to convert either on Toslink or coaxial. In my case, it's coax at the back of this one. So I'm gonna hook it up. Um, basically, my only problem I see when I look at this and I'm going, okay, how does it work? Uh, there is no control. It runs at 48 kilohertz. So that could be a problem or not. We'll see, because just to make it clear, for digital audio to transfer from one device to the other through one cable, it needs to run at the same speed, the same sample rate. So if this one is fixed at 48 kilohertz, so 48,000 sample per second, the receiving end must also clock to the same speed and be linked or locked in time with the other one. So when they send information, the first, info goes into the first box, second box goes second box. So that your 48,000 messages, they fit at the right place. If not, you're gonna get all these nice little, well, actually, these are, if, if it doesn't work well, you're gonna have glitches and, and, and digital noises. But worst case scenario, I'll use this to create distortion and use it sonically. But if you want a clean sound, you don't want that glitches, you know, and, and these, these uh, artifacts, if you want, of digital errors. But in my case, I'll use it if I have it, but let's actually see if it works clean first. So I'm gonna connect that into the power. I've got light, so I've got power on this one. Okay, power. I'm gonna get a cable. I just need one cable, and on one cable you've got stereo information, just you know, so it's clear. So on one cable, when it's digital, you've got all the information left and right. So I'm going to connect the output here into the input here. So this is connected. Now I need to connect the output of my Novation because I'm going to connect the Novation. Where is the cable? Cable. I'm going to connect the output of the circuit into this. So I've got these uh, quarter inch cables, left and right. And I'm gonna 
connect them into right and left. And now if I press play here, I know I've got signal here. I'm going to bring the volume up here. Do I have something? I wow. I think I have nothing. Hmm. I'm going to turn it off, the mixer. See if it can actually sync. So sometimes it's just to try it again. So what am I not doing right? What is wrong on this one? Sending the input here. I got the power here. Now, do I have still power? I still have power. I've got the output here. It's the right cable to the right input. Double check everything. Volume, close, back up. I know I've got songs, so if I disconnect, something is playing. So this is not where I've got a problem. It's being sent to this one, input. Output, uh, let's double check the back here. There might be also some type of settings I have to change here. Okay, so now I'm gonna do what we should usually do before doing this, check the manual. I'll be back. Okay, so I did what I should have done from the beginning is actually look in the poster manual what actually uh, control I have on the MX-1. But uh, like most of people, I like to try first and see if it works. So I got into it and there's, a, there's two controls uh, in it. Now, keep in mind that there's not a lot of options in the menus here to dive into these functions. So you need to actually hold the uh, gain button as you turn on the machine and depending on what is actually lit, there's a different option. Like first of all is if you do that on and you turn you, you turn it off, press on gain, turn it on while holding gain. Um, the track that is dedicated to digital input, if it's lit, if you press on select on it, if it's uh, lit, it means that it's input activated. If it's uh, turned off, if it's not selected, um, it will be output only. So you'll have an output coming out of that as a digital out stereo mix, I guess, of this. I don't have a digital receiver. I only have a digital sender. So I can test the other way around. So that was the first thing, but this was actually already in the input mode. So it was in the right mode. So that was not a problem. So then the second question is the one I was talking a little bit earlier is, is it at the right speed? Is it at the right sample rate? So there's another button at the same place while you're in that um, uh, menu type of approach or in that system menu if you want. If you press on BFX and you turn the channel setting, uh, you'll see on the window you have 44.1, 48, and 96. And it was at 96, which is the default value of the mixer, which is a higher quality sample rate. So I brought it down to 48. Confirm by pressing on start, boot back up the machine, turn off the circuit, and now it works. So now if I bring the volume down here, and I have it here. So Done deal. So this little box was about, um, you know, I think it was $30 Canadian. So the price is cheap, but um, the only problem you might have with a box like that is um, you might want to have one that has a switchable sample rate, depending on the rest of the device you're going to connect it to. Now, in my case, I can change this, the, the, the sample rate of the mixer but it's not always the case. So it would be easier for you if you buy a box that has a switchable from 44.1, 48, 96, or automatic switching, depending on what it receives or send it. That's it. Now I have an extra two input on my mixer. That's it. See you soon.